Hello and welcome to 2026 on Curzy Fabrications. Perhaps I wanted to do a quick video here at the beginning of the year, uh, kind of talk about what I've been working on a bit uh, and give you at least my rough sketch of what I hope to accomplish in 2026 on this channel. I know the past couple of years, the content has been light. Uh, I have tried to do as much as possible. I've tried to get up the vlogs as I'm working on something, tried to show you what I was working on when I do a con, like the two Dragon Con videos that I put up. If you haven't watched those, please take a look. I'll put links in the description where you can get those directly. That goes over a lot of what I've been working on in my Iron Man project, shows kind of the, the progress, the latest. So anyway, if you, if you haven't seen those, watch those. I will go ahead in this video, explain what I've been working on as well as show you some cool sneak peeks of what is coming very soon on this channel. I never get to present as much on this channel as I want to. Uh, this channel is an outlet for me, but as you can probably tell, it's definitely not a significant source of income for me. It is just a, simply a way for me to communicate with the maker community, show everyone what I'm working on, get some cool feedback in the comments and, and through other socials, Instagram, chats, where Wherever you can get a hold of me, emails. Uh, I appreciate all that. Please keep that coming, whether it is 3D printing, Ender 5 Plus related, although I just don't have the capacity to help as much there as I'd like to, or whether you're curious about what I'm currently working on with my Iron Man project, please always feel free to send me a DM or send me a, a comment in the comment section. I, I try to respond to as many, if not all those that I can. What are we doing here in 2026? So this is as much as I can potentially promise this, this is going to be the year of Iron Man, not just the helmet, not just the Jarvis, but finally putting this all together into a suit. Um, I, I was planning on finishing this this summer uh, for Dragon Con, and unfortunately that didn't happen. I ran into uh, both a time crunch, uh, a material shortage, some things that I couldn't get my hands on as fast as I wish I could have, as well as a, a glitch <laughs> in, in some of my hardware design uh, that did not work out the way I had planned it to work out. Uh, I'm gonna go over that here in just a minute. So what you see here on the table shows a lot of the projects that I'm working on right now. Let me go through these in no particular order, I guess, but maybe the shortest to longest explanation. So right here, is a stack of my new welding gear. This is what came with my plasma cutter. That art captain was super cool to send over to me. I was working on that. Hopefully you saw the unboxing short. If you didn't, you can find it in my shorts feed. It's the last one that I put up. Uh, and I am working on learning welding, plasma cutting, all that good stuff, learning to do metal. I would like to do uh, some metal work on this channel. It's something I've always wanted to learn. So given this outlet, I would like to, to take you along for that journey. Uh, I was gonna have the first use of the plasma cutter video up by now but unfortunately what you can't see is i'm in a boot right now and i uh, had some foot surgery and i could not get that video up in time so uh, i was working on it the day of or like the day before i had this foot surgery and it didn't get up in time so this will be coming very soon as soon as i get out of this boot get back in a regular shoe feel comfortable operating heavy machinery again you will see this full video got a whole bunch of cool stuff set up on the other side of the garage ready for this. So if you're interested in metalworking, following along with a guy that's completely new to it but has watched lots of YouTube videos on it, please stay tuned for that. Next up, the armor. What I got here is two different pieces of armor. This is a piece that is about halfway done. This is my nylon carbon fiber armor. Uh, the nylon carbon fiber provided by Polymaker, so still shout out to those guys. This is This PA6 stuff is amazing super hard. I won't have to worry about it melting, breaking, anything like that. But this represents two different phases of the armor construction. Uh, I have uh, this one, which is like I said, about 50% complete. It's got a lot of patching. It has the filler primer. Uh, it is ready for another round of sanding. And then once that round of sanding is done, I will be ready for the second round of, of primer, which this has on it. The black here you see is not the carbon fiber, it's the second round of, of filler primer, then this one only I think needs probably one more good sand down and hopefully it'll be ready for some sealant and then going over it uh, with the first few layers of the final coat of paint. This is, again, this is all ready to go. I've made really good progress on it. I got stalled out during the middle of summer for a number of reasons, but I'm going to continue with that very soon. Uh, we've had a pretty warm winter, so I, I should be able to get out here in the garage and work on it. So let's next talk about this helmet. So this is, this was kind of the last straw. I was having, I was trying to get the armor done right before Dragon Con. It probably wasn't happening, but I was working my butt off to do so. Ultimately, this helmet ended up just stalling the whole thing out. Uh, I'm going to show you here. Hopefully the close-up camera gets this. Um, I have a whole new video on this new board that is in the top of this helmet uh, right here. 
Yep, right here, this new board. It's uh, all, all new technology, a whole new software stack for it, new sensors. It's very, very cool. Got a whole video coming out on this. Again, that video's actually been done in, in a very rudimentary way for quite a while, uh, but I just haven't finished the B-roll on it. I gotta get to that probably right after this video is posted. Uh, but that board, that board went great. Everything looks great. It is a custom Kersey Fabrications board. Um, and then we have the new curved, beautiful uh, helmet opening display in here. I was very, very proud of this. As you can see, it does open as it should. Keep in mind, this is just, if you're looking at the print quality on this, this was the, I need to print it fast so I have a test helmet. I was working on this, this front face plate, got everything mounted up. And I'll tell you what, these flexible displays on here, they're just, they're a nightmare. Um, you do anything wrong with them, uh, you bend them the wrong way, you crease them the wrong way, even if you're being as careful as possible, and they break. And that's what happened to this one. I got everything ready to go, uh, and this, this broke on me. And it broke me for, for getting this out on time, and so I had to abandon it. Uh, these displays are a little over 200 bucks each. I've broken two of them now. Uh, and so because of that, I've abandoned the flexible display, at least for now. I'm not saying I won't come back to this. I do love the design, but I've really got to get me a flexible display that doesn't break so easily. It does work. If you don't try to mount it in the helmet, it works fantastic, but it's just too fragile. Uh, and if it breaks on me, it's most likely gonna break in it on anyone else who tries to do something similar themselves. And I, and I don't wanna lead people down that road either for people looking to replicate my work. That was a keyboard and it fell on my foot that's in the boot. All right, moving right along, let's get to the solution to the problem or what I'm planning to be the solution to this problem. I love building the displays myself. I like building as much of the technology from scratch as possible, but there does come a time where you have to realize that while you can make it yourself, that may not be the best solution. And if you're going for the highest tech and the best solution to a problem, sometimes you buy and integrate rather than trying to build it all from scratch. And so that's what I've got right here, guys. This is a big screen VR. It is the smallest, lightest, narrowest VR display on the market. And uh, this is not sponsored by Big Screen VR. They actually, I reached out to them a, a while back and they weren't interested in sponsoring me at the time. So this is on me. Uh, this helmet or headset, whatever we want to call it, this headset is a little over a thousand dollars. I also ponied up for the eye tracking, which is a little bit more money, but I really wanted to do some eye tracking integration into my HUD. So we've got eye tracking in this as well. I do think it is the perfect solution for what I'm building here. I'm going to have whole videos on how I'm going to engineer this, how I'm going to integrate it into the helmet. Again, with the goal still being that it does open, that it's got all the features I was planning on here, but let's not miss words. This is higher resolution. It is a, a higher refresh rate than this was what this was going to give me. It does have the built-in eye tracking. It is thinner. It is lighter. I think it is a better solution in every way. Again, these folks have the resources and the backing to build something high-tech that I can't even get my hands on. Uh, these displays, they're over 2,000 by 2,000 for each eye. That's not even something I can get my hands on. Uh, and I don't have the manufacturing ability to build these pancake lenses that they're building in here. Just a quick overview of why I've chosen the big screen VR as the solution for this. There's really no other competitor in the market that I can think of that will do this. There are some ones that you can get from AliExpress or stuff, but you'll spend this much or more on them. You will get them from China and you will hope they work. And at least this way with the big screen VR, uh, I know that it works. I know it's a proven technology. It's a company I can get a hold of if there are any problems. Along with that, I went ahead, uh, one of the reasons, so I, I think I ordered this back in February, something like that. And I just now got it like literally like two weeks ago, I think, two, three weeks ago. And one of the reasons was, is I didn't want a custom fit face cushion as they call it. I wanted something universal. I wanted something that other people can try on the helmet. That's something I like to do with people uh, is let them try it on. And so I needed something more universal. Um, there's still an IPD problem where I have to set it for how far apart my pupils are. Um, but that's minor compared to it just not fitting someone's face. So let me start with this. It's actually the only thing I'm open. This is a, a true unboxing, but you'll see here, it comes with two different face plates. Uh, one is soft and one is firm. I will probably end up going with the softer of the two. So that is the soft one. You see here, the top one was soft, this one's firm. Here's the soft. It actually fits my face extremely well. Let me try on the firm one as well. And then these, again, these, they're magnetic. They are designed to be swapped out. Here's the firm. And there's nothing wrong with the firm either. Uh, I think the soft will probably be better for my use case though. But anyway, I've got the universal cushions now and uh, that will be what I'm using in the helmet.
Let me go ahead. Let's do the grand unboxing here. Uh, again, big screen VR beyond two. And this is the 2E. It should have the eye tracking in it. I've already got my codes and everything to start playing with it. I am probably gonna start playing with this on the PC just to make sure it works. I just wanna validate that, you know, it's fully operational, no dead pixels, nothing crazy like that. Eye tracking works like it's supposed to. I will validate its functionality before we ever move on to integrating it with like the Jetson uh, and the helmet. But anyway, let's take a look at what we have here. Take a look. All right, it is a beautiful unboxing. I went with the, let me, let me tilt this up a little bit. I did go with the clear one because I love being able to see all the details in here. Uh, so this is the clear front. You can see it's autographed by everyone. Let's go ahead and pull it out, take a look. Looks like I have a finger hole here. Uh, it says this is your big screen beyond two, custom made for you in Los Angeles, California. The car has been signed by each person involved in the team. All right, what do we have? So this is what all the fuss is about. That's how small it is. See there, nice clear display showing you all the technical insides of this. Does have, uh, yep, it's got a plastic cover on it to keep it safe. I'm gonna keep that on for as long as possible. And here are the displays. The eye trackers are here and here. It's the eye tracking display mechanisms there. Um, and if I grab one of my cushions, that should pop right on there. Again, it's magnetic. And then there it is. I can't see a thing. So if you're worried about, like, if you're, if you're interested in these universal cushions, there is no light leakage whatsoever. Um, I'm not seeing anything outside of here. Um, yeah, I can't see anything. So definitely, at least on my face, this is a fantastic fit. I'm going to try the firm one, too, just, just to see what it's like. And there's the firm one on there. Um, maybe a little bit more light leakage from the nose area than I was getting. But I don't know if, there, if I had something like holding this to my face, maybe not. So I would probably go with the soft one, just like I said, I'd probably go with the soft one either way. Along with this comes, uh, oh, this is a little tool for adjusting the IPD. I have all of the strapping here as well. Uh, this is the, just the standard strapping. I should be getting the, the nicer strapping where I can flip it up and stuff like that, which will be great for development, but I haven't received that yet. I need to contact them to find out when that is shipping. I thought it'd all come together. Along with that, inside the box, this should be all of the cabling that I need. So I've got this adapter box that it comes with here that I can hide inside the armor. It's got a display port connector. It has a USB connector and it has another USB connector. And yeah, this is the uh, USB-C that goes to the mask itself. What else I have in here? Uh, this is the setup guide information. And in the bottom, we have our super long USB-C cable. And it looks like I have a wipe right there. So that is my full big screen beyond setup. Anyway, so that is uh, what I'm gonna be using inside the helmet. Like I said, I'm gonna do a, a you know, pretty easy test where I hook this up to my PC, make sure that it works the way that I expect it to, and then I will begin uh, the custom 3D modeling that I need to do, the software integration that I'm gonna to need to do, testing it with my setup and making sure that it does everything that I dreamt it would do. So beyond that, what have I been working on? Most of the time I spend working on the software that goes into all of this, and that has taken up a great deal of time, uh, although I'm accelerating that process a great deal these days. Um, so what I've been working on the past few years has been a proof of concept. Um, it's not really a minimum viable product necessarily because it's, it's not productized in that way, but it's more of a uh, let's show people what we can build. Let's show how this will work. Let's show that it does work when you put it everything together. And so that's what I've built thus far with my uh, Iron Man setup. But what I've been working on the past couple of months has been actually productizing the software. And what do I mean by that? I mean, taking something that was once just a proof of concept and showing like, I want everyone to use this software in whichever capability or capacity that they can. And so like the past two months, I've been working a great deal on um, my Jarvis Friday software that I have dubbed Dawn. Um, and Dawn is a software suite that I went, what is Jarvis? Uh, when you see him in Iron Man 1, um, when you see him later in the show, in the movies, what is Jarvis? What are his capabilities? What does it take for me to take Jarvis? And instead of him being a tech demo, which is what most people's 
Jarvis really are. If you look at them, um, they're all designed in a web browser. You have to have the web browser up to use them. Um, they are a single instance of Jarvis that is only here. Um, and so what do we do to take Jarvis into what you see him as, as whole home control? He's in the helmet. He is in every room of the house. Uh, you can ask him questions. He controls automation. He really is that AI assistant that you've dreamt up. And that's what I've been working on with my Dawn software. It is no longer a proof of concept. It is getting very close to the release. And when I say release, I mean that it at least fulfills all of those primary goals. Like all of the ideas I've had in my head have been implemented. You can put Jarvis in multiple places. You can access Jarvis on your phone. You can access Jarvis in a web browser. All of these things with a single personal assistant. And that personal assistant can be local using local large language models. It can also access open AI large language models, Claude large language models. I can integrate more into the future. This is what I'm talking about. I plan on throwing up a couple of screenshots here for you so you, I, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. There's obviously going to be more videos on Dawn as I get it ready for production, as I want people to beta test it, as I want people to try it at home and see how it works on their home networks. Uh, and as people can start feeding me more like, man, this is great, but can it also do this? Can it also do this? And I start working on a feature list. Um, and again, it is designed to be an embedded product that runs multiple places, that is reliable, that is extremely fast and responsive. That is what I'm aiming for with Dawn. Let's now talk about Mirage, which is Mirage is the heads up display software that runs uh, in the helmet that, that actually shows you what you're looking at through the cameras. Mirage, I've worked a lot on uh, speeding it up, making sure again, it's solid and stable, that anyone can use it with a camera, different types of cameras, different resolutions, make it run on a Pi. Like all of these features are there in Mirage now. I actually just need to spend a little bit more time, I guess, making it easier to compile. Again, making videos for you so that you can follow along with this. Um, and understand what I've built and how to use it. And I am doing my very best at while, you know, Iron Man software is not designed for cheap, low cost hardware. I'll do what I can to find a minimal viable hardware for you so that it is within reach. But if this is the kind of hobby you wanna participate in, I cannot tell you how important it is to actually go out and get your hands on an NVIDIA Jetson or a couple of Jetsons. So I recommend the original Jetsons that I use for like the helmet and stuff, the Orins. Uh, Jetson Orin Nano will get you started. Uh, once you get there, you can get uh, upgrade to Jetson Orin NX 16 gigabyte, which is what I use for my Iron Man project. And then if you're really starting to think about like I need a home assistant, uh, I want to build like a hub for my home so I can really build a Jarvis, consider getting you a Jetson Orin AGX setup or even one of the new Jetson uh, Thors that are available now, which I still unfortunately don't have in my possession, but we'll talk about that later. Again, I think that's everything I've got to talk about here. Uh, I've already ran a little bit longer than possible, and, and who knows, you, I may have cut out a bunch of the, the chatting that I've done here, or I may leave it all in, just because if you're interested, hopefully you've stuck around this long. I guess the last thing I wanna mention, if you're still into 3D printing, if that's what brought you to my channel to begin with, uh, and I can't believe you've actually sat through this whole video and waited on this part, uh, but yeah, I plan on doing continuing 3D printing. As you see, the, uh, the Iron Man stuff still requires 3D printing. It's gonna bring uh, the welding and the plasma cutting into it. This is a multidisciplinary project, and so the printers are gonna stick around. Uh, I would love to do some upgrades of some of my printing fleet, because, I mean, seriously, guys, still running the same printers in the shop I've always been running. They're all the older, slower machines that require a little bit of manual work. I don't have any bamboos in the shop or anything like that. I would love to get me a couple, see what modern 3D printing looks like uh, other than just through YouTube. So I do want to bring more of that back to the channel. So if that's what you're interested in, please leave a comment below, let me know. It has been a pleasure being a part of your lives and you being a part of mine for the past, I don't know, five, six years that I've been doing this channel. Thank you all for your support. I do still have the Patreon set up if you care to contribute to the future of this channel or if you have just contributed to the past of this channel. Thank you so much uh, for all that you've done. I appreciate your time. I appreciate uh, your support. And I hope you all have a fantastic 2026 filled with love and happiness and hope for what is coming for your future. Thank you so much. I'm Chris, this is Crazy Fabrications, and I will see you very soon.